Right, so today, um, well, right now I'm currently sat in my Lotus Esprit Turbo that I bought a few weeks ago, and I, I introduced it to the channel briefly, uh, but I couldn't drive it because the door, the door latch was broken, which meant the door was just swinging open. Uh, but I've now kind of had that fixed, and today I'm going to show you, because I've literally I've never driven this car before, so today I'm going to give you my first impressions on a 2.2 Lotus Esprit Turbo. <laughs> So there it is then, um, it is obviously bright red, uh, my colour grade might look a little bit different because I like to throw a grade over that makes sort of the clouds and the sky, well there ain't no clouds today actually, in fact the sky's really nice and blue but it'll make the sky look good but it may look the, it may, may make the car look a bit sort of off ready, orangey colour but um, it is a bright red car and if you walk up closely you'll see that the paintwork is perfect and that's because the whole car has had a respray recently, so it's absolutely immaculate all over. Now, let me tell you how the car come about. So, for those that don't know, we've got a company called the Car Buying Shop, and in a nutshell, people drop in to sell their cars, and every now and then, we get the odd special car come in, and this was one of them special cars. So the guy's come in, he's, um, he's thinking about selling his car, and we've ended up agreeing a deal that was extremely fair for him because we were really keen to buy it and um, it does need a little bit of TLC so the plan for us is to we so we bought it and the plan for us is we're going to tidy it up a little bit and uh, and pull it up for sale you know try and try and make a profit on it so like I say it's um, bright red uh, there was a issue with this door latch which there still is um, because I'm quite keen to get in the driver's seat of it, I've managed to get it so it closes now and it stays closed but the outside door handle doesn't actually work so I need to replace that. Um, I'm going today to get the wheels refurb so I'm going to drop it off to RRT UK in Luton. Uh, they do a great job of wheels. And you can see like the wheels, it's the only thing really that stands out on it. The wheels are sort of pickling here and there and they've been a little bit curved. So we're going to get the wheels done. Um, if you're wondering why I've got it running right now, because I've just spent the last 15 minutes trying to get it started and it's definitely going to need a new battery because uh, obviously it's just barely been driven so I've left it running just to keep it ticking over and I hope that's not affecting the sound of the mic too much so if we walk around it's an F-Red which is a 1988 which is actually the year after I was born so it's 30 years old um, but it's had a crazy amount of work to it like I say it's been painted uh, I'm not sure if this spoiler comes on as standard, I don't know if the v only the V8s have that, but that's a nice touch. Uh, around the back we've got these quad lights which I think look really cool. They're, when I first saw it I thought, oh I don't know if I like them, but they've really grown on me. That's a, a big extra to pay for. Uh, it's had a full exhaust system from Lotus as well, so again that would have been quite an expensive thing. Uh, the engine's actually in the back under there, it's a 2.2 4 cylinder engine. And if I show you on the interior, now like I say, I know a lot of you have seen this already on the inside, but it's literally got the cockpit of your typical 80s supercar. It's unbelievable inside, so it's really, the seats are really dipped in, and it's quite a cramped car to drive, especially for someone like me, I'm six foot two, uh, but it's got a real cool sort of 80s supercar feel. So what I'll do is, if I spin the camera around, Woolly hat on because it's freezing cold. And what I'll do is I'll jump in it, go for a little drive, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Bear in mind, we're going to RRT UK today as well to get the wheels done, uh, so I'll show you a little bit how, about how the car drives, and then we'll do another video later on down the line when the wheels have been done, the car's been detailed, and the interior has been sorted out. All right, let's go. Very, 
very cramped fit. The door is obviously, um, yeah, it's not uh, fully been put back together yet, but I'll explain more about that in a sec. Reach around, put my seatbelt on. Oh, heating works, which is good. There's, oh, there it is, seatbelt's in there. Yeah, need that today. I think what I'll do is, let me just begin the task of doing this window up first. underneath it's an old car bear in mind this is an old car yeah <laughs> can't have that open because all the wind noise will bother you lot so that's the window switch done uh turn the fans down so that don't interfere, interfere too much i think i'll get that magic tree off there as well get out of the way right lotus esprit yeah now bear in mind this is a noisy car it's a very old car and like sound deadening and stuff, we've got a door card missing. What I'm trying to say is, when we're driving along, it may well be a bit noisy, and if it is, I am sorry about that. I've, um, today I've mounted, I normally have a camera mounted on the windscreen pointing forward. Today I've mounted that camera on the rear, so you can see the back end and the spoiler. I just thought it'd be a nice little, I don't know, it had a different angle to the, to the video. Um, so it's got a manual gearbox, it's got a reasonably heavy clutch, what I'll do, get in first gear, we'll get moving, and I'll tell you a bit more about the car, yeah? Oh, before we go anywhere, Check this out, let me just stop here. I'm on a private road, so don't be thinking, oh, look at him doing that whilst he's driving. Um, I'll just flash the headlights, yeah? So the headlights are obviously flashed by, um, duh, 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 duh. this is what I'm, see, this is why I love these types of cars. They've got so much character. When do, this sort of stuff don't happen nowadays. So if I just press record on this camera, uh, duh, 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 duh. so that's obviously how you flash a headlight on a car, and you, this blue light here will light up, yeah? This car, check this out. Oh, and, and you let go, and they put back down. See what I mean? That that is just pure character. Just thought I'd show you that quickly before we head off. Start again. First gear. Let's go. Which way should we go? This way, I think. We're in third gear, that bus wants to be on my side of the road. Um, I think the, the word character is exactly how I want to... It's the word I want to focus on in this video, because this car is a car that has, without a doubt, has got so much character. Now, bear in mind, like I mentioned earlier, it's 30 years old, and I'm 31 years old, so it was about... When I, when I was a kid, this was a big part of my childhood. I'm not saying it was a big part of my childhood, they were a big thing on the road, you know. It had supercar presence. It weren't quite a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, don't get me wrong, but a Lotus Esprit, back in the early 90s, was a serious car. Do you know what, on that note, talking of early 90s legends, Nafco 54, I'm wearing a, a grey, a charcoal grey hoodie today. If you want to buy one of them, I'll be stupid not to right now talk about that. Um, no power steering. Uh, <laughs> I'll put a link for that in the description below, Nafco 54. If you're about in the 90s and you remember a Lotus Esprit, then you will more than definitely remember Nafco 54. So, like I said earlier as well, I, I mentioned that it, oh my God, trying to steer with one hand is it's just such a task. That um, I did attempt to get this car started this morning. It took about 15 minutes, bit of a bit of a task, but uh, eventually got there and I have already driven this car a couple of miles. So this is my first impressions, but keep in mind that I've already driven about two miles in this car. And as a bit of a turbo, turbo spool there, when you let off, it just sort of, it flutters a little bit. It's, oh, so cool. Um, so yeah, 
as with any car, you get into it with an expectation, don't you? Well, no matter what car it is, you get into a one litre quarter, you get jumping in, you think, oh, that's going to be slow, and it's, it's only got three cylinders, it's going to be really dead on power. And I jumped into this car and I looked at it, and like it, it's got serious presence. It's a big, fat, wide car, which looks amazing, but I kind of got the feeling that it was going to be, um, it was going to drive like that as well, fat and wide and and a bit horrible to drive and, and, and with probably a lack of power because it is an old car as well bear that in mind it is an old car and it's not likely to have lots of power now i didn't know the ins and outs of this car or the like the power thank you mate what power they produce and stuff but i've recently discovered they a 2.2 turbo four cylinder engine this one's got produces 260 brake horsepower and it does 0 to 60 in just over five seconds. And that is actually extremely impressive. That's like, uh, uh, is that quicker than like an Astra VXR? And an Astra VXR is a quick car. So I thought, how the hell is that big, fat, heavy car producing that sort of performance? Like 0 to 60 in just over five seconds, that's unreal. And as I looked further into it, I discovered that it only weighs not even 1,300 kilos. Now, considering the size of it, and I know that back in the day cars weren't built so well, but a modern day car that has the presence of this weighs a hell of a lot more than 1300 kilos. My GTR, for example, weighed about 400 kilos more than that. So it does, so I got into it with that expectation. I thought, is, is it gonna be slow? And then I realized, hold on, this car is actually quite quick. When I discovered it was 1300 kilos, I thought, that's obviously why. It drives like an old kit car, by the way. But that's all the only way I can explain it. So, second gear, just just above 3,000 revs. When you put your foot down, the turbo's there straight away. And honestly, the boost, I'm not gonna drive too mad because um, we're on icy roads today and this car <laughs> has recently had a full wreath brain. I do not want to be the person to do damage to it. But it drives unbelievably well. It's just so it's such a satisfying car to drive. It has got an old fashioned, quite tough to use manual gearbox. And the clutch, like I say, is a little bit difficult to use, but it ain't horrible. But the engine just feels so bloody good. In front of the driver here, we've got very again very old sort of analog analog looking dials they look like something out of an old aircraft uh, but right in front of you in the middle you've got a boost gauge yeah which you want to see that if you've got an old turbo any turbo charge car and as we boost it's showing that it's producing about 0.6 bar of boost so it's running at a really a low amount of boost and it does pull unbelievably well it's actually crackling a little bit out of that this is like modern day exciting stuff and it's a 30 year old car. When you let off it flutters like a save and I must admit, going back to my expectation of it, it is much, much better than I thought it was gonna be. Inside it is like I say a little bit cramped, but what I am six foot two, so I'm sort of I'm not oversized, but I'm a little bit bigger than your average person and uh, I don't know, it's kind of part of the character of the car, I suppose. I am, as I turn, my left hand is hitting my knee. A little bit annoying when you're trying to drive, but... <laughs> For me, this is exactly what the car trade is all about. This is why I got into the car trade. This is why I love what I do. Because I get my hands on stuff like this. Like I say, I've, I picked this car up today to, to get some work done on it. I don't plan on keeping this car. I don't actually keep anything. I've, I've got the Gold Far at a minute, which I've, I've hung on to for a little while. But everything eventually goes up for sales. My plans with this car is, like I say, get it detailed, um, get it, get the wheels done. That's where I'm going right now, to get the wheels done. The interior could do with a little tidying up, so if I can get someone to do that, that would be good. Uh, you know, just general stuff. And of course, show you a lot of much of it as I can. Now going back to the character thing. In fact, let's just go, let's just give it some accelerator through this bridge. 
I always loved that bridge as a kid. I used to, just, my old Calibra and stuff, I used to just cane the arse out of it through that bridge. And it's like a railway bridge. And it just echoes, I love that. Love that in any car. But yeah, the character. Character, sorry, I keep going back. So the, yeah, the character of the car. It is fat, it's wide. Red is a very supercar looking colour, you know. We, when we think of a Ferrari, for example, you think of red. It is just a, a typical supercar colour. And it has got the presence of a supercar, without a doubt. I mentioned earlier about the back lights that have been changed. I do really like the back, the original back lights on the lights of this I think they look so cool. Um, also, like, when you're sat in it, when you're sat in it, sorry, look out, you look out the rear, view mirror there you can see the big spoiler on the back it feels like a real grand car to drive and I don't know when do you like jump in a normal car like my Golf R for example it, it is like driving a completely different machine obviously performance wise there is a bit of a difference but the cockpit of this car it is so different and the fact that it's got no power steering as much as I absolutely hate it Again, it does provide character. And I must admit, although I've heard some horror stories about the reliability of these cars, as I drive this car, but as far as the engine, the gearbox, and the way it drives is concerned, it feels like a bloody good, solid, reliable, almost, I wouldn't say the gearbox feels modern, but the engine, it feels like a really modern engine. And I think the fact that they did put a turbo on it, Again, just adds so much. Oh, the back wheels lit up a bit there. It is rear wheel drive as well, by the way. Yeah, the fact they added a turbo to it just adds character. And the turbo is really low end, low down, which is nice. There's Imran from Revolve, that's funny. Speed camera there. I'll slow down for that. So, What's the summary? I will say that I suppose there is a V8 version of this car that's got about 100 brake horsepower more, I think. There's, there's, there's no sun visors. There is no sun visors. Sun's blinding my eyes. There's no sun visors. Again, is that good? Definitely not. Is it character? Will, will you find owners boasting about it? Definitely. Um, but yeah, they do a V8 which has got more power. Uh, there are a lot more a lot more money, uh, so for obviously from an investment point of view, if you was to buy one to invest in, you've got part of a lot more money. And uh, for me, like I said as well earlier, I, for me, we just buy whatever we're offered. So I didn't go out of my way to buy this car, it just come to us and luckily, it's something that I really like. So um, out of preference, I think I would love to get my hands on a V8 one. Um, but these cars start at about 20 grand, maybe a little bit more than that. And this will be an entry level car value wise, and it will be better than most of the other ones on there, I believe, because of the condition and the work that it's had done on it. It's actually done 91,000 miles, so it's, it's probably on the high side of the mileage. Um, but it's not horrendous mileage, let's face it. It's not, not, not a lot of miles considering the age of the car, especially. The engine has actually been rebuilt, by the way, which is. Um, a huge factor uh, with these cars because the reliability is definitely something that's in people's heads. Back end just lights up, can you believe that? I suppose you can. Unreal. So I am going to leave it there. Let me just check my camera's still on the back. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm going to leave it as that. I'm almost at RRT UK, let me just give them a little shout out there, basically they do a lot of alloy wheels for me, so uh, for those that are new, I'm, I'm sure you get the idea, I'm a car trader, I don't prep all of my cars, like some of them I do stuff, stuff like this will get prepped and eventually it will go up for sale and I'll just sit on it for, for a period of time until it sells, but RRT UK, they're based in Luton, um, I'll put all their details in the description below, they do a lot of my wheels, I have filmed a video on the in inside of their unit. They do an amazing job. There is not many people in this country that have got the setup that they've got. So if you want a proper job in your car wheels, they do diamond cutting, they do painting, different colors, whatever you want, they will sort it out. They even fix buckles and cracks and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I rate them a lot. 
like I say, I'll put their details in the description below. What I am gonna leave it as that. I'm pulling into their industrial state now. Right indicator on. I'll get in front of that lorry, I think. Thank you, sir. I hope you like the video, and I know that's out a lot, but I do genuinely really do hope you like the video. This is a very different car, but this is the diary of a car trader, and I like to get as much different cars on my channel as I possibly can. So if you did like the video, hit the like button, and as ever, if you are new, do hit the subscribe button because I'm uploading every Wednesday and every Sunday, two videos a week, and I've been doing that for about four or five months now. So um, I've got plenty of videos coming your way, all right? Oh, sorry, before you go, um, I am gonna film another video on this car once it's all prepped, I'm pretty sure I will. I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing it, but I'm pretty sure once I've had the wheels done, I've had it detailed and stuff, I will film a second video on it, just showing you, I suppose, the process of getting it prepped. Uh, the door, obviously, that needs sorted now. But this is the car trade. I want to be raw as, as raw as I can. I want to show you what's going on and like day to day life of a car trader. All right. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd just get that in quickly before we go. So look out in the next few weeks. I'll get something else filmed on it. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. In the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader. Remember that unloved low mileage S2000 that I brought a few weeks ago? Wait till you see it now. <laughs>